Welcome everyone. Good evening. Um, um, and I'm going to introduce myself in um, my Diné language. She Yepa Batani um, my name is Winoka Yepa. I am Diné. Um, originally from Chibrock, New Mexico, um, but currently reside in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is on the traditional homelands of the Tewa people, um, also known as Oga, Oga Pooge, which is White Shell Water Place. Um, and I am the Senior Museum Education Manager at the IAIA Museum of Contemporary Native Arts. So I would like to welcome all of you to our social engagement artist talk with Dene artists and this month's social engagement artist, Eric Paul Reich. Um, so I'm just gonna let um, Eric Paul go ahead and introduce himself. Thank you, Wanoka. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm super stoked. Um, this is my second residency ever and both of them have lived online. Um, so it's a new thing for me, um, but super fun and experimental as we all transition into like living more online and doing these things. Um, well, not really transition, we're, we've done it for a year now. So I guess we're all kind of used to it. But yeah, it's a Eric Pariji and a shea, Tachiti Nishle, do Beshbichai, a Dashin Bashishin, Aro Kiani, a Dashiche, do Beshbichai, a Dashin Nale, Ego Dine Nishle, not Nijoja de Ayesin Nisha, do Kehash, do Nashnish, do Nashne. Um, my name is Eric Paul Reed. I am um, from Gallup, New Mexico, not Georgia, New Mexico, a border town here in uh, Northwest New Mexico, um, around the, um, surrounded by um, the Neta, um, the Navajo Nation. Um, I uh, am really inspired by um, what this place has has gifted me in terms of knowledge, in terms of curiosity, in terms of um, language and, and home and, and family. And that's something that's been really prevalent within my practice within the past uh, four or five years, um, like this very steady active decision to um, celebrate that and to play with that and to, to dance with that and to weave with that. Um, I come from a family of makers, um, both on my Diné side and my Bilagana side, which is uh, Anglo white side. Um, my father is German American um, from Indiana and in Ohio. Um, and so having these um, craft and, and making skills um, from both sides of my family directly influenced my hand. My dad is left-handed and my mom is right-handed. So I always say this is my dad's hand and this is my mom's hand. So they're always talking to each other. Um, and I feel like in a lot of ways, I wish that my fingertips did have little mouths so they could explain and talk about my work. Um, cause I feel like they, they, they know so much more than, than what I do up here, what I do right here, which is exciting. Um, I think being a student of your hands, um, and a student of what they can do has allowed me to, um, be curious even further about, um, making, and let me introduce you to my family up here. So this is my mother, Aretha. She was about um, five or six years old in this photo. I don't know if you can see it in the image, um, but in the original photograph, she drew eyeliner on herself. Um, and I love that. I was like, you, you know, you always, you always got to stay ready. <laughs> You never know who's gonna gonna uh, take your photo, uh, but her shirt right there was made by um, her mother. So this is Effie Ashley. Um, she also made um, her regalia in that photo. Um, she was uh, murdered when my mom was about five, and so my mom um, relocated from Burntwater, Arizona, her and her sisters, to um, outside of Gallup in uh, Yumbato, which is around Wingate, and um, with her father's side, my Chase side. Um, this is my great grandmother, so my mom's grandmother. There's little baby me, um, Angela Ashley, and she's um, she lived to be about a hundred and um, four. She passed in two thousand six, and so I was twelve when she passed, and so I got to have um, a relationship with her. Um, and again, she um, really was connected with hands and recognized people by their hands and their touch. Um, she always said, if you had soft hands, you were a smart person because that meant you, you worked at a computer. 
And if you had rough hands, you were a field worker. <laughs> um, and that's what she said about my dad when she met him. Uh, but she she um, was affected by the uh, Navajo livestock reduction of the 1940s. And I'm going to share my screen now. Um, Is that your Masane or your Nele? My Masane. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, and so I um, was really thinking about that during undergrad um, and this relationship to weaving that I have, um, which I feel like her um, energy and her spirit not only lives through my hands through weaving, but then also is this beacon of um, making and craft and, and love and home within my family. So um, I worked with Sue Han Ho, um, who was my first perform was first uh, my performance art professor, and then I started taking ind independent study classes with her, and then she became my thesis chair, and now I'm lucky to call her a, a colleague and a collaborator and a close friend. Um, but we we worked uh, for about two years on this project um, when I was going to school in Albuquerque in 2000, um, like 16 through 17, and um, this being a representation of all the knowledge that I've learned from. Um, my great grandmother. So the two weavings that you see, um, kind of in, in the the middle, um, the one that's uh, red, yellow, and black, and then the other one that's uh, red and black, um, were her weaving. So when you enter a, a hogan, you always go clockwise and move around the um, the inside of the home. And so this piece began with her, and then um, also ended with her. And so during this performance, I took on the perspective of um, one of her sheep that is being taken away by the United States government and then escapes and is now lost on the reservation um, and in the Neta um, looking uh, for her home again and looking for his family. Um, that's Suhan there on the left. And um, it was kind of how I re related to myself in a lot of ways. I'm someone that's lucky to have stories and, and language um, directly passed down to me and, and shared with me by not only my family, but um, close community members, but I'm also still a young person trying to Na navigate uh, my own contemporary indigeneity and so there are often times where I personally feel really lost or, or confused which is not um, always a bad thing um, but always being a, a receptor of of this knowledge um, so in creating this these works um, they all um, become their own characters within this story and then they all have their own voices and personalities and introduce themselves to Debe and kind of guide him um, around um, my my this home and then um, our home, um, learning, teaching, sharing about um, colors or symbols um, or materials. Um, material usage is something that's um, really prevalent within my practice and the accessibility to materials, um, particularly um, from indigenous folk and from people that live remotely. Um, I don't see um, material as inauthentic or authentic. I like combine them in a lot of ways um, because of how we um, create our own works and we create our own stories about ourselves. So for example, um, the jewelry pieces are in the back. Um, I wanted to create my own idea of what turquoise could be because um, you see a lot of negative attitudes about um, indigenous people that create jewelry from fake turquoise and the connotations of what that means it's of like the uh, commodification of like the Indian art object and the aura that that has um, for both insiders and outsiders. Um, and then also in relationship to economies and, and tourism, um, particularly in a place like Gallup, where the economy is completely run um, upon indigenous identity um, and also uh, com completely um, ignores um, a lot of the stories um, that go into that. And so um, that's one example of um, these these works kind of sharing knowledge with me and um, allowing me to, to have these conversations. And um, from that, I um, began to think about my reuse of materials. Um, so oftentimes when I'm working, I will create and then um, disassemble, I will make, then unmake, then remake. Um, so a lot of these materials that you see in, in these um, early images from like 2017 are still material, materials that are present within my work now. Um, which is also why it's kind of been difficult for me to to either sell or, or part with my work um, because of the many lives that it lives as I navigate the world and as I scar um, the work scars as I bruise the work gets bruised as I grow and change the work always is always growing and changing um, so that having this direct relationship to the work having 
um, seeing maybe if when I cut my finger, there's a little bit of a blood magic now that lives on um, a soft sculpture piece, or um, when I was performing with it and it was torn as it like got tangled within my toes, um, seeing all those um, scars and moments that live on the work um, on its skin um, is something that I celebrate and something that I love, um, which has also sometimes gotten me into um, some conversations with some museums about the way I, I handle my work because I, I kind of like the action um, of them being on the ground or dust getting on them, you know, of people coming up and touching and grabbing and holding. Um, and so oftentimes that happens in the studio, not necessarily in the museum. So if you ever want to touch my work, just, you know, come hang out with me and then, <laughs> and then we can we can work. We could do that, make that happen. Um, this weaving right here um, is a simplified version of the uh, Navajo Nation flag with our, our four sacred mountains and then um, the original 1868 um, allotment and the, the darker brown and then in the more copper browns, um, the current boundaries that are um, placed upon our, our peoples. And um, this is again, referencing back to that idea of learning about oneself. Um, I, this was a, can, this, these conversations began with this idea of is it? Um, so this term that um, us as, as another people often um, share with each other slang, like, oh, is it? I started thinking about the term is it as um, what it means for these objects to, to have a life or to, to have a story. Um, and what it also means for, for um, again, inside and outside, um, which was a, a very important conversation for me to have at this time, um, as I was, I was kind of setting up the foundations of my work and the roots of my work. Um, there were questions that I had for myself and for my, um, that I had with, with friends um, and that I had with, with strangers and classmates. And so um, I guess this confusion and, and during this time directly um, was in, input into the work. Um, but then as, as, I, as I grew older, I started thinking, um, I, I, I developed this passion for movement and movement in relation to weaving. I think about as weavers, as we sit still at a loom, but our arms and our hands are constantly dancing with this material and feeling the, the threads of these fibers um, run through your fingertips and then um, growing from the ground up um, on a loom. Um, I started thinking of these long meditative periods of slow action and slow movement, um, completely like, complete, I like, I don't know, it was just like, I was so in tune with it. And it was like, as I sat at the loom, I realized I was like, this is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. This is where I'm going to be in my next life. And this is where I was in my past life. And so it was like this beautiful epiphany that I, I had in realization. Um, and I can like pinpoint, pinpoint the exact like moment that I, ha I had that realization. And so in exploring that, I felt like it was important to um, dance with the work in that way. And so while I'm in my studio, or, um, you know, practice process, um, craft-based work, um, I think about the sounds and the actions that go into um, creating a weaving. So whether that be the, the herding of the sheep and the um, taking care of the animal itself um, through the shearing of the wool, through the washing and the carding and the spinning um, back into the weaving. Um, I consider that all a collaborative process. And I think about just the many lives that go into um, not only creating one piece, but into just creating a you know, skein of yarn, um, not only from our 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 neighbors um, and the the humans that are a part of that process, but then the non-human, more than human um, animals and, and spirits that go into this, um, and it's something that I I really really feel when I performing. Um, I call all my performances weaving dances. This being the first um, one where I I took on this these ideas and this role. Um, as being a dance partner with my work. So this was at the Sanitary Tortilla Factory in 2018 and uh, run by Sherry Kreider in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Sherry's super, super amazing. And, and um, this was the first of many projects that we got to work on together. And during this time, I didn't consider what I did necessarily endurance-based work, but having these um, long conversations and, and, and periods um, engaging with the fiber on my body, putting this toll um, and this exhaust um, and heat um, on myself, but then persevering and then being surprised about 
through the lengths that I can put myself through um, in performance. Like I'm a, I'm a skinny dude, you know, I like, I've never, I meditate and do yoga, but I've, I've never been one that like exercised, I suppose, growing up um, besides just like, you know, what, what, what we did in school. Um, so having this energy that was gifted to me from the work and being able to see the lengths that my body and the strengths that my body could be, um, that could, that, that could absorb into my body um, was thrilling and was exciting for me. I also use the, I've used the metaphor in the past of um, when you're calling a friend that you haven't seen for a long time or a loved one or a family member, these conversations that you have um, aren't 10, 30 minute conversations. They're like hour long conversations where um, you want to learn about their lives and what, what they've been doing, their endeavors, their dreams um, and catch up like, like in the, in the most caring way that you can. And I feel like when I perform, I'm having these, these conversations with my work. I'm, I'm talking to them. I'm learning about what they want to do, what they want to be, what sounds they want to make, um, the songs that they want to sing. Um, sometimes we're dancing together really well and, um, you know, spinning around the gallery together. Sometimes we step on each other's toes and um, I become cocooned and, and can't really move. Um, but I, 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 I see all of this as just me learning about the work in a lot of ways. Um, learning about the work in more than language terms um there's definitely a huge part of my work that i feel um my limited knowledge of of language at all even english um cannot describe and so one way that i've i've learned to talk about my work is to um have people wear it have people interact have people touch um, I feel like that's the best way that I can talk about the work because it's the work directly talking to you through action. Um, this work was at uh, the National Hispanic Cultural Center in 2018, curated by uh, Jadira uh, Gurule. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. Um, and it was called Let the Holy People Watch Over You and Me. And in a lot of ways, it was me um, having these conversations of, of weight on my body and carrying these looms, these beadwork looms. Um, throughout the galleries, um, but then also having this trust within myself um, and the work itself and the audience um, to guide me um, in ways that I can see. I feel like there is an element of gift, um, not only from myself to the audience, but from the audience um, to me and being able to see. And I mean that in a way of what I'm performing, I often, my hair is down, I have a bunch of regalia on, I, um, will have a mask on this works on me um so i literally for the most part um only have a, a, a short range of of sight and so i'm relying on the energy of the audience feeding in into into how i can can move around you um or move through you or, or move past you um and it's a it's a beautiful gesture and gift that i that i totally um am humbled and grateful by when i get to uh perform um amongst others and it's, it's something that I, I dearly miss and I'm excited that in the hopefully near future um, we'll get to do again um, as something that I've, I, I, I'm a very extroverted person and rely heavily on the, the, the kindness and, and giving of, of others. And so um, in a lot of ways, when I perform, it's almost the thanking of, of audiences. Um, what are some of the most like memorable, memorable like responses you have received? Yeah. Um, people viewing your work? Yeah, um, so like even right here, uh, that totally relates to that. Um, so part of this performance was, I created these small medicine bags of um, some of the, the polyfill that was on the inside of these um, beads, um, some churro wool um, that was gifted to me, some taradine, which is a um, corn pollen uh, blessing powder that we use in, in ceremony and throughout our day-to-day -day lives as Diné peoples. Um, and, and some of my own spit. And so there are these, these bags that I, I um, created um, and then offered to the audience if they um, would want to, to take one. Um, so for example, um, someone like Grace Rosario Perkins, uh, her grandmother was there and took one that was really special for me. Um, childhood friends that came up um, and got to, to share with me. The woman in the back that's dealing with the hat on, um, her name is Caitlin Bryson. Um, she's one of my, my, my best friends and, and collaborators and and uh dear 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 um dear friends in life 
And the day before this performance, we were actually performing for her MFA thesis show, um, again at Sanitary Tortilla Factory. And uh, during that performance, um, I cut my hand, the palm of my hand. I don't know if, if I'm still on the screen, if you mm -hmm. can see it. Um, yeah. But it's right along like my lifeline right here. Uh -huh. And um, we were doing this, she works a lot with uh, mushrooms um, and with remediation of, of the land um, with mushrooms. And so, and she's also a weaver. And so with this performance, um, we were, ha had these threads of her work um, in a, in a uh, dual weaving um, exercise and, and dance. Uh, but as I cut my hand, my adrenaline was was running so high. My my brain was elsewhere in, in the ether, um, and I just started seeing blood on the the gallery floor. And so we went to the back. We washed up, and I could see that I've never seen the inside of my hand before. I could like see the fat, um, and it was super intense. That, like I couldn't believe that it was like, my own body. Um, but we went to the emergency room. We have like eyeballs painted on our faces. Our hair's crazy. We're covered in blue indigo dye. Um, and it's a, it's a funny story now, but it's a, it's a beautiful memory that I have. And it's something that I refer back to when I'm talking about the strength of my body and the surprise that I have in, um, in how I can, um, absorb and channel and radiate that. But then also in that moment, I started thinking about the fragility of, of the skin and the scarring of the skin directly relating back to my work, how this soft wool material, um, just blows in the wind, a, a, like blowing on your hand, that wool will will disintegrate and, and flow and, 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 and disappear. Um, but when spun, when carded, when, when woven, it becomes this like super strong, um, un, and impenetrable, impenetrable um, um, like facet of, of human um, ingenuity and, and technology. Um, and so uh, I, I think of that a lot often when I'm making as well. Um, one thing that's I, I, um, I, I do a lot is I, I create a lot of digital collages and, and um, before I was considered myself, I guess, a, a weaver um, as like a young kid navigating like the early 2000s internet. Um, and like MySpace and stuff, I like taught myself some like really bad like CSS and HTML coding to like, you know, pimp out my MySpace profile. And so that DIY sense of, you know, a teenager trying to uh, finding an online, a cheap online platform to, to make an image and to make some art was something that was like inherent with me and something that I did as a, a kid and teenager. And it's still really important and reflective within my work. Um, again, relating back to um, how we as young people create our work and create ourselves and what we have access to. So I was um, fortunate and privileged to have access to, you know, a cheap PC computer um, with dial-up internet, but I, I made some really cool rad images as a teen. And so that's directly um, input in my practice now. Um, I don't consider anything that I do as static. Um, there's always potential in what it can be. Um, so these are some of the regalia works that were in um, the site Santa Fe Biennial here, um, but I wanted to uh, show motion through static images and show um, how these uh, regalia pieces look when activated by my body um, and when spun and danced with. Um, so it was important for me to show movement in here through a static image, um, but then also, again, celebrating um, all different aspects of, of art making that go into my work. Um, as I wear a regalia piece and take a photo of it, maybe that photo will then become a collage image or a sketch for another work. And then that will collage can be printed on canvas, which then is embroidered upon or, or created or made with a pillow and then performed with and then broken. And now there's like these broken parts and then I can make sounds with that and create that a sound piece. And then that sound piece becomes a score. There's like all these direct um, familial lineages of my work, um, which I think is really exciting. It's like my work has its own mother, my work has its own father, mm -hmm. um, my work has its own brother and sisters and cousins, um, and they all get to to hang out and 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 dance with each other and play with each other. Um, it's something that I, I really celebrate and it really um, always excited to be a maker in that way. Um, I was talking to my mom earlier. I was like, Mom, when should I retire? And I was like, no, I'm never going to retire. You know, like as an artist, you, you can't retire. Like once you like accepted the calling of being an artist, it's like, yo, you're stuck for life, <laughs> which is like definitely not a bad thing for me. Um, and it's an exciting thing for me. Um, 
and it's one that I'm I'm always excited uh, to to learn. Um, so, for example, this being um, a work that I I made um, alongside Candace Hopkins, uh, Jose Luis uh, Blondet, uh, Ruba Katrib, and uh, Naomi Beckwith, who were curators for the 2018 uh, site Santa Fe Biennial called Casa Tomara. Um, and when Candace and Jose Luis came to my studio here in, in Gallup, um, I shared um, the stories of, of my uh, great grandmother and my family. Um, and they were really drawn to that image of um, the first image that I showed you um, that was on UNM's campus. Um, and um, about these altars of the woman figures in my life, um, ones that I've had direct relationships with, and also um, one of our holy figures, um, Naash J. Edza, um, who was Spider Woman, that gifted uh, the, the beauty of weaving to um, our two hero twins, um, Born for Water and Monster Slayer. Um, as they enter, one of our stories is as they enter her home, um, seeing these, these weavings, um, and then them passing that on to to their children and then their children and then their children and then my great grandmother and then her daughter then her daughter and then myself um i wanted this to be a space of uh beauty and of um honoring these women that have have gifted me this knowledge um so the title of the piece is dian hajo um weaving dance uh figure three for Naash j edza retha effie angela so retha my mother effie her mother angela her mother mm -hmm. um and these two figures acting as um, the hero twins when they're separate. And then when worn by my body, um, I then develop eight appendages and, and arms. And so um, as a, um, a, a shout out and a, a thanking of um, our holy figure, uh, Spider Woman. Um, another aspect that's really vital within my practice is um, there's a word in Navajo, woshtan, which means to come in. And so I think often as indigenous people, how do we um, share and celebrate our stories and our, our lives, um, but then also protect what's sacred for us, um, for us, by us, um, protect our holy stories and, and, and protect our, our, our ceremonies and dances as, they, as we, ha we have all experienced direct family members that were either in boarding schools, um, uh, languages that we um, aren't able to, to, to speak. Um, but we are, are continuing to learn how to speak, um, having our ceremonies and dances and rituals banned and outlawed. Um, how do we protect these for ourselves now? And mm -hmm. so um, one aspect that I, I've, I continue to learn and I'm always ex welcome to, to conversations and, and, and um, opinions. Uh, but with this piece, for instance, I, I wanted this to be a place to invite, um, of invitation, of come in, we'll stand. It's this trusting of someone on the other side of the door. Um, when you hear, when you knock on someone's door and you hear that from the other side, there is a trust level there of um, acceptance and of um, welcome. And so having these looms act as um, walls of this hogan of um, not only my home, but your home and, and Spider Woman's home. Um, there's a level there of, of quietness and, and um, a breath of consideration of a slowness, again, directly going back to weaving. Um, weaving is a process that's built, um, you know, millimeter by millimeter. It's a medium that's very forgiving, but it's also a medium that's very, um, definitely you, you grow, you grow a lot with your own patience <laughs> um, as, as you, as you weave more. Um, um, but yeah, the, and then the loom acting as this, this spiritual plane, um, as weavings are on the loom, they're, they're living beings. And so as these weavings are living beings to, to house the space, um, they you are able to see through them, and you're able to see on the other side of them. So I consider that an element of welcome, um, of not being blocked by this wall, um, but your energy being able to 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 go through it. Um, yeah, and, and I uh, love that of 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 Bush Dan because I remember when um, I was working at Site Santa Fe, we invited the Santa Fe Indian School students to come and do um a workshop with you and mm -hmm. I remember them being really afraid to touch a lot of the art because in museums you know yeah. you're you know you're kind of like told not to touch the art mm -hmm. and so I remember I think you did um you had them weave with you on one of the looms yeah yeah, yeah. and I thought that was um 
I thought that was that was amazing. And I remember some of the um, yeah, some of the students were like really happy to like actually be a part of the installation. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. That, thank you so much. Yeah. That, and when I was invited to do that, I was thinking about who am I to call myself a teacher of weaving? Mm -hmm. um, I, I consider weaving something to be shared. Um, and so when I was thinking about that and having um, the, the students and, and, other, and others come up, um, instead of me taking this role as, as teacher, it was this dance and this exchange between, between us um, sharing the knowledge of, of, of weaving itself, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is also something that I've trying to come to terms with um, and giving these artist talks and sometimes doing these workshops um, and taking the role as teacher, I suppose. Um, and I, I love teachers. I've, I've had so many teachers throughout my life. Um, my mom works at an elementary school here in Gallup. Um, but uh, I, I, I have a hard time taking that role. Um, and so I, I always consider myself a student alongside um, mm -hmm. others and the, the material itself is our teacher. Um, and then also just a quick shout out to Winoka. The first time I went to site um, was um, I messaged you and you invited me up there. Mm -hmm. And so thank you. That was my first time ever being at site. And you walked me through the 2016 uh, Much Wider Than a Line by yeah. Adiel. And so, yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but without that, I, I would definitely not be in this space right now. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, this work right here, um, directly developed from this piece. So as I was, I did four performances here, um, and I started thinking about how this place has birthed me in a lot of ways. And I thought of, well, what I'm, what I'm creating, um, my mind often acts as a womb, you know, and a, a sketch and our idea could be a, a fetus or an embryo. Um, and then the product, um, could be your, your baby. And so I had a son, <laughs> um, <laughs> This is Holland. He's right here next to me right now, actually on my screen. Um, <laughs> but he acted as this figure to me um, of remembrance. I feel like I'm someone that doesn't have the best memory when it comes to, to language or talking. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes in, in a conversation, um, I'll remember someone's um, face or, or, or um, their, their laugh and their smile and their, their, their beauty. Um, I guess versus sometimes what is said, um, but that's just something that I've I've been the way my whole life. Um, I'm someone whose memory literally lives so much in object, objects and fibers, um, and so now as as I've grown up and started to realize that, I feel like my work has definitely evolved into this place of what memory is and how these objects hold memory, um, memory of the body, and how sometimes maybe I won't remember a certain term for. Um, as I'm looming or as I'm, um, you know, warping a loom or, or weaving, I remember a certain term of like the type of stitch that I'm doing, um, but my hand immediately knows it. And so sometimes I think about what does it mean to, to be fluent in, in a language? Um, my hand can create this, but my word, my mind or my mouth just can't say it. Um, and so I, I really value the, the, the memory of a body. And so I wanted to pass the, that down to this figure. So his name is Holland which is uh, the Diné word for um, to exist or to have. And so you could say something along the lines of like, Masse um, so there is a cat or Masse um, I have a cat. Um, so this word became really vital to my practice um, as alongside with memory, um, meaning for something to exist. Um, so all these memories exist inside this work um, and outside the work, they're, they're teaching me as much as I am um, learning as, as much as I am um, learning from others. And so to, to have a son, um, it was important for me to have this figure to always come back to, to hold these memories for me in case I get overwhelmed um, with, with the knowledge, which I often do. I'm a very uh, sensitive crybaby. And so <laughs> sometimes I, 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 I can feel so much, so, so heavily. Um, and so he's, he's been kind of this figure to hold on, hold on to a lot of that for me um when when i am unable to um i remember meeting holon <laughs> yeah yeah at sight um yeah, yeah. <laughs> um he's a, how old is two years now he's two years old yeah. um but in this exhibition it was in a lot of ways um kind of removing myself from these conversations and allowing the work to to discuss with him what they mean um by by me not being there and for it to for it to, to be so far away from home in Miami. Um, 
it was it was new for me um i've like also never like ship work with like an art shuttle um so it was like um all these new conversations that um were not only for my career but um also for for my cosmologies and concepts and i felt like to have him there um i felt i felt better about the the entire the entire work um my mom um, has been someone that has always kind of been trepidous, trepidatious about um, travel, um, particularly outside of the four sacred mountains. She, like when I moved to Albuquerque, she's like, "Yo, keep your eyes out. You know, you're <laughs> this, you're not you're not here no more. Um, you you just got to pay um, careful attention." Um, and so I've I've kind of developed that in a way, and um, I uh, am always super nervous to travel. And so for me, in a lot of ways, one ways me in a lot of ways that. For me in a lot of ways one way that i've like been been okay with that is this introduction of home and of family at these places so that way i've always have something to to hold on to there and i i don't feel alone um and and so having him there and having his home there um it it, it was definitely a, a place of um of of quite again quietness but then also of of celebration mm -hmm. um here here are some of the the works on my body um making this active decision to to wear everything that i do um has been important as well um in terms of like my own practice and ideas i feel like it's kind of rude to not to <laughs> um, if i create something I, I want it to to interact with my body in a lot of ways so even now creating sketches um i like let me see if i can find that one um or there's some up here on the wall and then um Right now, I've been sewing my sketches um, into these pillows and then plan on using them to, you know, some of the sounds that they make are amazing. Mm -hmm. But having this, having this decision uh, to, to interact with the work on a physical level um, has been really important for me. Um, learning how to, to move and navigate and, and wear them um, is always exciting um, and always, um, I don't want to use the term problem solving because it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, to critically think about how these things can exist um, alongside myself and how we can weave and, and become one together. Mm -hmm. um, this hey, Paul, could you talk a little bit yeah. about the um, the symbolism on your arms that I that you see throughout the images? Yeah. Um, so another thing that's that's been important for me is as I as I perform and as I work, it's important for me to look like my work. Um, and so the, rep the uh, repetition of the cross symbol, which I attribute to um, my own symbol for Hijot, mm -hmm. which is uh, our philosophy as the dead peoples of goodness and balance and, and harmony, not only with yourself, but with um, the spaces that you inhabit, um, with the spaces that you're gifted and blessed with, uh, with the, the land and the animals and the trees um, that you're, you're invited to be around, um, not only in, in this life, but in your, your past life and, and your future life. Um, and also not in this physical realm, but also the spiritual realm. So this idea, uh, which I, I use um, and represent a lot um, with crosses. Um, so having these on my body, it's important um, for them to be there during the duration of the performance, um, but then also having that ephemeral quality of having them fade um, over time um, as I move and as I, again, as I scratch and scar um, some of this, um, some of the things that I use is like um, some like charcoal ash. Um, sometimes I'll use different sorts of um, India inks. Um, sometimes I'll get like cheap makeup from like Claire's. Um, mm -hmm. So having like this combination of, of materials, again, directly goes back into my ideas about accessibility to materials and, and material usage. Uh, but then also this weaving together of um, what it means to be a, a young contemporary uh, native dude, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um things that i like you know like claire's like um there's like this camp element to it I, I i feel like i'm someone that's uh i have a there's a sense of humor in, that's really also prevalent within my work um a sense of fun a sense of play um like it almost in a lot of ways tongue-in-cheek i mean i'm someone that likes to i'm very lighthearted. I, I you know like to lighten the mood um and in groups and, and make people laugh i don't know if that's maybe a a, a personality uh trait of um 
I don't know. I, I like people to like me and I, I like people to get along, you know? <laughs> um, and, and so, um, but playing with that and playing with that funness and playing with the, the tongue in cheek capness of, you know, having a beanie baby head on top of a, a, a regalia piece. Um, there's a funness there. Having my son be made out of some um, fake cheap uh, materials that I got off of Amazon. Um, there's, there's these, these levels of, um, of of play there and of of kitchen camp that um, I, I I think is fun. <laughs> um, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, this this work right here um, again at Sanitary Tortilla Factory with Sherry. Um, this exhibition was um, let me actually it's a really long title it's a poem. Um, my favorite things to be called are Sun Yaj. Miho, they remind me of when you wove your fingers through my hair. Meanwhile, these poems bloomed for me with these poems. When I wake again, the flowers will call me Sun Yaj Miho. Now remember when you wove your fingers through my hair. And so I was thinking about um, how I could honor myself in the in my next life. I suppose um, the um, figure that's hanging um, from the ceiling um, with all the the arms and almost looks like an octopus. Um, I call these angels, and so I'm I'm wearing. The one on the left here, and and there's another um, version of 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 these angels that I create. Um, I feel like angels have have guided me and blessed me in a lot of ways. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm I've I've been um, again overwhelmed by um, the amount of goodness that has presented itself to me throughout my life, and internally humbled and grateful. And so um, I I felt like I needed to channel channel that. Um, energy into into these figures um into these angels and so I, I started thinking about myself in my next life um and I thought maybe as I I talk about these cycles of life and death throughout my work and making and unmaking it's like maybe this version of an angel is from my future self or from my next life um guiding me and 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 telling me or maybe it's a lot you know maybe it's a lot um through these other figures um it's something Within my own spirituality that I'm continually continuing to learn and to explore through my work. Um, when I use the term like holy people, um, sometimes I'm directly speaking about a spider woman or I'm talking about a holy figure um, through my own life, whether that be that piece itself, that piece is a holy figure to me as um, it has, has guided me and, and grounded me and allowed me to fly. And so this exhibition was in the a lot of ways um honoring that and then also um honoring um the space itself so um thankful to that memory of my body um my scar and reminding me of the fragility of life um and how when i am buried with this work um in my next life they will bloom into to flowers <laughs> um this work right here was at the herd museum this past year um curated by Aaron Joyce. And um, when she visited my studio here, and I was speaking about these relationships to memory that I have, um, and talking about these, these jewelry works that were in the very first slide, um, and how I wanted to revisit them, as, I, as I've been told by um, family members, particularly um, my grandma, about um, as, you, as you're listening throughout the day as a, um, a person, um, particularly as Native peoples, we adorn ourselves with with jewelry um, as, as a means of collecting knowledge. Um, so as um, you heard a, a story or a song that maybe you don't remember, um, as you put your earring back on, it was listening just as much as you were. And so it's, 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 it's telling you what it heard. And then also um, as a, a, a way of our holy people recognizing us. And so as they're looking down at us, they know um, which ones are our fam, you know? <laughs> and, and, and this work was, um was an honoring of that and having these totems of um not only our our symbols and our our beads and our craft um but then also um with our memories and our relationship to our own um holy figures and and spirituality mm -hmm. um i'm going to skip this slide and i wanted to end today on uh this image right here um so this is the house that I grew up in. It's actually right next door to the house that I live in now. So I lived here from, I think it was about four or five to when I was 17. Um, and I have so many memories in this house, so many beautiful memories, so many beautiful experiences, um, but it's boarded up now. And um, for a while, uh, the people that were experiencing homelessness 
um, inhabiting the house. And then there were also some like shady, like trap house things going on. Then it was um, infested by like this swarm of, or like so many bees, there was a bee infestation. So one day there, some beekeepers had to go in here and, and clean it out. And I'm not sure if I would ever go back into this house if I had the opportunity to, um, maybe. I, I, that's still a conversation that I will have for a long time. Uh, but I have weekly dreams being trapped in this house um, and not being able to get out. And I don't know if that's in relation to it actually being boarded up. I don't know if there's a part of my subconscious or memory that's stuck in there. And so it's something that I've been wanting to revisit um, and think about and have been thinking about. And so um, for the Toronto Biennial in 2022, next March, um, I'm gonna recreating, be recreating my, my house to scale um, with my loom works. And so I invite everyone, if that's a possibility, to visit my home, um, which will then be in Toronto <laughs> in, in, in March of next year. Um, and I'm wondering if that for me will, I don't, it's not that I don't want these dreams, it's just something that, that I'm, I'm always intrigued by. Um, so I'm wondering if, if recreating this, if there's gonna be something in, in my mind that allows um, these feelings to be let go, maybe they'll be, become stronger, I don't know but it's something that I need to do and want to do. And so I'm excited to, to, to share this home um, because it's a beautiful home and, and one that holds so much for me. Um, but it's just, it's sad now that this is the way that it looks. And then um, in my, my dreams of it, um, they can be super intense and I'm trapped in there. And sometimes I know my cat's outside. I can't get to my cat, you know? So <laughs> there can be some, some, some silly dreams, some intense dreams, some uh, happy dreams. Yeah, um, but I have them weekly and so it's something that I'm going to do in the future and I'm <laughs> stoked um and yeah wow thank you so much um and let me just give you a quick little 360 tour of my studio um I'll be posting more on the um the website of like my process in here um but here are some of the regalia works um, the, we're in the, the like biennial and stuff that I'm working on. Here are some new ones that are currently in development. Um, these pieces right here are going to be a part of a project in June. I'm not sure yet if I'm allowed to announce it. Um, I don't want to get in trouble, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but part of a, um, a project in June right here as well. Um, what are some... they made out of? Right now, they're uh, currently out of foam, um, some foam that I've collected over time. I'm like a hoarder of materials and I keep everything. And so some of it has been foam that I've collected over the past few years. And then some of it's also been some new foam that I purchased as, as those budget checks come through, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, yeah, um, here are all my weaving combs. Um, I've been collecting my hair for the past few years, um, hair that I cut or falls out or is in the brush. Um, so I have my, my hair here. Um, this is for work that I'm working on that I have to ship off on Sunday. Um, about, uh, I, I think it's so beautiful the way art handlers pack um, work. And so I sometimes never want to take it out because <laughs> it's like these beautiful cocoons and like, it's almost like a weaving for the weavings. Mm -hmm. And I think they're super, super beautiful. Um, and so for this exhibition, um, I wanted to, to um, think about what a weaving means for a weaving and what protection means for something that protects you. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Sorry, it, the sun went down and got kind of dark in here. Yeah, no problem. I had to um, turn my lights on too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always wonder how, how do you feel about keeping your hair? You know, like I always remember growing up, my grandma was telling me not to like keep your hair around, you know, because it's <laughs> like, considered you know kind of like a bad thing to have your hair kept in your home and if somebody takes it you know they control you yeah 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 I think that's one of the reasons why I keep my hair almost yeah. almost for the same reason uh -huh. um and in, in discarding it or like burning like you know just we burn it um yeah. but like in discarding it um I'm just afraid of yeah of what someone will do with it so I was like if it's if it's <laughs> in my protection it's it's uh, and if it's in my hands it's, mm -hmm. it's okay with me. Um, mm -hmm. But also I, I've been thinking about, about why I'm collecting it and I'm not sure if I want to do something with it um, mm -hmm. in terms of like a, a project 
or if it's something that I just need to to have on for a long period of time. Because as I, you know, as I grow my hair, um, I don't plan on cutting it for a long time. I have dreams about cutting it, and I wake up and I'm so happy it's still here. So maybe when I, if that ever happens, if I take a leap of cutting my hair, it'll be like this this own ritual for me of of thanking it over over time um, mm -hmm. with the with the collection that I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, thank you so much, Eric Paul. I mean, like thank it's you. great. It's great to, you know, see all of, you know, all the work that you have done because I remember seeing your work, you know, at UNM for your BFA and actually, you know, being able to go in and, you know, actually see it and and then seeing your work at site and, you know, in form and concept and all of these other, you know, galleries, it's really great to actually like, you know, see you and hear you talk about it. Um, yeah. Thank you I so mean, much. Yeah, you know, because I really like to, um, how you, you know, really emphasized, you know, home a lot, you know, mm -hmm. um, because for myself, viewing your work in, you know, viewing your work in person, you know, and seeing it now virtually, like it, you know, it reminds me of home because I come from a family of weavers mm -hmm. and seeing a loom brings forward so many like memories and stories, mm -hmm. you know, of my Nele and my Masane, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of the stories that were shared were when in moments when they were weaving um, and me just sitting, you know, right there next to them and just yeah. listening to those stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I definitely, I, de I appreciate that and that your work always reminds me of that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. That, that, that means a lot and that warms my heart. Um, yeah. Like even um, like when my, my, my mom was a, a, a child and she would sit next to Angela, her, her grandmother, Mm -hmm. um and sometimes help her by rolling a skein of yarn into a ball um for her weavings that's a gesture that she does for me now um that I I am so grateful for or like uh one time too she didn't know that I was about to weave she was like in the other room and I um what started uh begging the loom with the the, the comb and uh, or beating the loom with the comb and she said in that moment she was just like transported back like 40 years um through these sounds and so again like thinking about all the things that go into weaving the the sounds that go into it that's something that I explore through through performance um and want to uh, I'm not a sound artist but it's something that I've been wanting to to include as well there's so many beautiful sounds that go into my work that I'm like I I want to see how that can live within these sound mm -hmm. compositions um so that's something new for me too that 2020 encouraged as we were all at home um mm -hmm. that I was wanted to experiment with more yeah, no, it's definitely exciting. Um, so we have a few comments and some questions um, from Felix Sanchez. It says, you're so talented. Thank you for sharing your work and your philosophies. Have you thought about extending some of this work into fashion? Are you interested in that medium? Um, fashion, um, fashion's fun. I like fashion. I uh, like my shirt today is from the herd. I'm rocking my herd museum gear, and it's um, Ian Kalui. Kalui. Uh, so shout out Ian, you're so rad. Um, but he has some some cool works um, that were uh, for sale at the the museum with t-shirts and stuff. Um, so shout out him. I I I don't know yet. I guess um, I yeah. I make some of my own clothes. I think fashion's fun. Um, I don't know maybe maybe it's the commercial side of it i mm. like i don't know that's just like conversations like that kind of freak me out and so like <laughs> it's it's one that i've um and i guess am open to for a while like when i was younger i was i was really into fashion and keeping up with like shows and stuff um but now it's like i i don't know yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i really don't know <laughs> Uh, I, I I have had this idea before of having my regalia like have a fashion show for my regalia but the performance is a fashion show that lasts like 12 hours of someone just walking back and forth on a runway the same piece <laughs> <laughs> I had that, that idea popped into my head one time <laughs> <laughs> that might be interesting <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so this one's from a and says anonymous attendee but it says as a mother, the way you talk about your creations reminds me a lot of going through the birth process. The way you talk about the wool, for example, was like a newborn, delicate, but with time and care, it would be woven into a strong person. 
I like that you rework your materials from previous works into new pieces. When you do that, how does that relate to the life of the precious work? Um, yeah, so I thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I think about the work definitely as a, a birth process and it's again a cycle of, of birth and death and rebirth and redeath. Um, and, and, and thinking about how work relates to, to previous works. Um, again, going back to this idea of familial knowledge um, and my work in a lot of ways, some work kind of being the, the mother or, or the father um, of a piece um, as I'm wearing it, um, maybe it'll tell me that it wants to be two pieces and so I'll, I'll disassemble and take it apart. Um, so then it's almost like a cell organism in that way as well and in, in, in dividing. Um, and and I, I think of it directly again as these continuing of lives and these, these sharing of lives and, and rebirths. Um, and it, it directs relatedly not only with the, the material usage itself, um, with it um, continuing over several bodies of work, but then also again with, with scarring um, and with bruising. Um, like for instance, if you can see on this, uh, the inside of this regalia piece, there is a lot of, of, of scarring there. And then also a lot of um, where the, the ink and the ash rubbed onto um, this leather. Mm -hmm. And so um, let's say, for example, I were to disassemble that work and then for it to live in a future piece, having having that um, visual communication of a past life um, is how it um, directly relates uh, to, to future works. And it's something, again, I, I love. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, we kind of got to the end of our hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, thank you again, Eric. Thank Paul. you again so much. Yeah. Um, um, for everyone. Um, so the social engagement artist residency is this entire month. Um, and so we'll be having public programming throughout the month. Um, Eric Paul will be taking part in a Instagram takeover this Friday. Um, so he'll be, um, sharing a lot of his work on our Mokna Instagram. Um, so if you have Instagram, definitely follow us at IAIA Mokna. And also uh, we have both of our social engagement artists um, also sharing a lot of um, their work and their journey through this residency through our website. Um, so they both have virtual studios where um, they're really per, um, partaking in curating, you know, um, a digital studio of their own. And so I encourage you to definitely um, visit it's mokina residency.squarespace.com. Um, so definitely um, you know, definitely check that out. And there are there is a way to engage with the artists on that website as well. And so um, yeah, and then um, next Wednesday we'll have a talk with um, our second social engagement artist, Anna Supalarkis. And she will also be taking um, part in an Instagram takeover and those will both occur on Wednesday of next week. So um, definitely um, check that out as well if you're available. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, thank you again, Eric Paul. Yeah, and thank you everyone for taking part in our public programming. We truly appreciate it. So- Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Winoka. And thank you for everybody for, for coming and sharing space on, on our screens together. <laughs> 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 thank you yes yeah and thank you and take care yeah have a good evening <laughs> bye see you later <laughs> yeah. Bye. yeah oh yeah <laughs>